Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook, and this is another installment of the G Wizard Video University. In this case, I want to talk about how to use G Wizard's tool crib. Here's what you'll learn from this video what a tool crib is, why to use a tool crib, a complete demo of how to use the tool crib, and a little bit about managing your tool inventory using G Wizard. So let's start out. What is a tool crib? Essentially, it's a database for your tools. The idea is to enter the data once, and then it's there to be accessed with just a couple of clicks. Tool cribs can be shared between machines, applications, and users. They'll save you time and help you to get your tooling more organized. Let's do a quick demo. I want to show you first how the tool crib works with feeds and speeds. Okay, so here's G Wizard. And the tool crib access in G Wizard is right up here. There's no crib selected, which means you're just dealing with generic tools. But if I come down here and select a crib, the tool menu changes, and I get to see what the tools are that are in this crib. Okay, and I can select one. And if I do that, it'll go through and fill out all the information associated with that tool. So much quicker than having to enter all that information yourself. Here's another way you can access the tool crib here. Let's say I've just spent some time setting up, I don't know, some sort of a special tool. Uh, let's make it a carbide. Uh, let's go with three flutes. And in this case, let's make it a uh, ball nose cutter. Okay. I don't know. We've got all the information here. I'm not, I'm not going to fill it all out because what I want to show you is this two crib button. Really cool. So I click two crib and basically what it's going to do is take the tool you've defined in feeds and speeds and put it in the crib of your choice. In this case, I've only got one default tool crib. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy it over there. And so boom, here it is. I'm looking at the tool crib editing and, uh, Basically, I've got a half inch ball nose and I want to go ahead and put that in, right? So I save that and if I look over here, sure enough, I now have a half inch ball nose in my tool crib. Pretty cool, pretty quick, pretty easy, right? Okay. Now let's talk just for a minute about tool crib types and properties. So I'll, I'll walk you through how to do all of this in the product in just a sec, but I want to get a couple of concepts down. Every tool crib has a few properties in addition to the list of tools that are in the crib. There's a description, okay, which is how you're going to refer to your uh, tool crib. Um, it's your chance to identify a particular tool crib. A crib is any place tools might be found. Uh, it could be a physical location, such as a tool changer on your Haas VF2 uh, milling machine, or it could be a particular tool cart. Or it could be an imaginary place, like maybe you have a catalog, and that's the list of all the tools needed for a particular job, or all the tools your shop has approved for use. So those are abstract or imaginary tool cribs. So use the description to identify the particular crib and use the type, we call it options here, to identify what sort of a place it is that these tools are being kept. Their types are pretty self-explanatory. Then the last thing is we have the ability to designate how many slots are in the tool crib. And if you put a zero, it means it has unlimited slots. But anything non-zero means that it has a limited number of slots. For example, you might have an automatic tool changer on a machine that's got 20 slots for tools. And uh, if you set your max slots to a particular number, then it will show that many slots at all times. It'll keep them sorted and it'll only allow you to have one number for each slot. So that's pretty handy as well. Um, now let's talk briefly about managing your tool inventory. Imagine creating tool cribs that correspond to every place a tool could be found in your shop. That's every uh, 
every tool changer on every machine, uh, the machine spindles perhaps, uh, your physical tool crib, tool carts, all of those places. And you enter your tools in the crib where they're currently located. Now, anytime you, you move a tool around between the cribs, use the move command to, to move that crib so you know where it is. Um, for example, you might move the tools from uh, your tool storage in your physical tool crib to the tool changer when you install them on the machine. So why, why keep track of it that way? Well, you know, if you've ever spent a bunch of time trying to find some tool where it is so you can use it for some other job, <laughs> you realize that's a real pain. If you keep organized with tool crib software, you can use the tool crib search command and track down exactly where your particular tools are. You can even create tool cribs that correspond to uh, tools you've loaned out, uh, tools that are maybe sent off for repair, resharpening, that kind of thing. That's all possible here. Okay. All right. Now I want to demo the actual tool crib tab for you. So let's get back into G Wizard and have a look at that. So here's our tool crib tab. And we go here and we can see it's, it's roughly divided into three areas. You've got all the commands along the top here. You've got the list of tools that are in the crib and you've got, I just selected a tool, the properties for whatever the currently selected tool are. So these are all the fields that we track uh, for your tools. Now, if I go across the top, I've got my list of tables that I can choose from that I've created. I can make new ones. I can rename them. I can delete them. Um, I can see a view that shows all the tools from all the tables. That's handy a lot of times if you're scanning for things. Uh, I can change my description, uh, my crib type, and my max number of slots. I can import and export uh, these tool tables as CSV files. Uh, that's pretty handy. I can search, and this search will work across all the cribs uh, to find a particular tool. Uh, create new tools, edit tools, um, move tools between cribs, copy tools between cribs. Uh, the crib wizard is a way to create new tools in bulk, uh, perhaps to create a, your initial crib and save you some data entry. It'll, it'll create, for example, all the end mills between the two sizes in Imperial, Imperial or metric, you know, make them carbide, yada, yada, uh, to make it easy to create uh, tools in bulk. Okay, now here's to edit your tools. It's pretty easy or to create a new tool, it's pretty easy. I can click the new tool there and get the tool data entry. Uh, I personally prefer to use the two crib to create a tool because I'm just, I spend more time over here and I'm more used to this style, but you can do it in the tool crib too. You can just hit, hit new tool there and fill it out or I can come down here, I can edit this uh, ball nose. I can double click it or click the edit button and I can change various things here. Um, you know, maybe it wasn't a ball nose. Maybe it's, a, I don't know, maybe it's a, just an end mill uh, that's a normal end mill or a serrated end mill. I can, I can make that change uh, in here. Um, I can set uh, really anything associated with the tool, but I also have some new things. I have the ability to track the vendor, right? The insert that belongs with the tool, the tool serial number if it has one. Uh, tools have a status, which is, yeah, okay, they're there, they're ready to use, or we're out of consumables. We don't have the inserts available for this tool, so it can't be used. It's broken, it's off for service, it's been borrowed, or in other status. So you can, you can kind of track what's going on with the tool there. Our GWizard Editor lets you store various types of tool compensation information uh, in a tool crib. Uh, you can track your holder here as well, a description, perhaps the holder has a serial number or some other kind of thing, and you've got all the different types of holders uh, available here. Um, lastly, there are custom fields. You can create up to four different custom fields, and the values of the custom fields will be kept there. And in fact, uh, using this custom tool, you can also change the name of the custom tools. So, I don't know, you might want to put uh, the machinist that has the tool in hand or something along those lines 
uh, might help you out in your tool tracking. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much the deal on tool cribs. That's how they work. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video.